serves me, you were born and raised or raised in the Oakland area, true or false? Correct, correct. Yeah. How many, do you have brothers and sisters? Uh, I have five brothers, half brothers. Holy really God. didn't grow up to them. I really didn't meet a lot of them until I was here in El Paso. It's really? Kind of strange story. Yeah, it's crazy. So uh, your uh, high school uh, teammate, Gary Payton, right? Yep. yep. Now, Oakland, Oakland was crazy in the, during that time period. Is that not right? A lot of guys came through there? It was a good time for Oakland basketball, for sure. You know, uh, yeah. Gary, myself, Antonio Davis, um, Ryan Shaw, Isaiah Ryder, Jason Kidd, uh, just to name a few. I mean, all in high school? Yeah, this is all in that same era, that two, three year kind of uh, span. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty competitive, huh? Uh, no, we weren't all in the same league. There were different leagues. And, you know, I played in Oakland um, um, City League and Brian Shaw, Jason Kidd, they played in Oakland Catholic League. So um, Isaiah Ryder, I believe, played in uh, Catholic League also. So, yeah, there were different leagues, but, yeah. Could Myself, you Gary, and Antonio were both in the City League. Yeah. Well, I mean, the talent was uh, identifiable from the get. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Big time. A lot of guys were getting recruited going to Division One schools back then. Yeah. So, but Gary and you were on the exact same team. Yeah. Yeah, he was my high school point guard. Yeah. Was he yeah. a shit talker all the way back then? Oh, yeah. Big time. Big time. Big time. He has <laughs> not changed one bit. Really? Changed one bit. You, you ever talk to him? Uh, yeah, we talk uh, every, every blue moon. Every yeah. Blue moon we, we He's got to be talk. proud of his kid. Oh, yeah. I'm proud of him. Yeah, I'm just happy for the kid. He really, you know, uh, stuck with it and went through some G League stints and getting released and traded and all of those things and landed in a great spot. Yeah. You know, my hope is for guys like that, that, you know, teams will see that there's, you know, defensive minded players mm -hmm. that might not have the ability to shoot as long as they're in the right situation. You know, yeah. when you get to a playoff situation, you need, you know, lock down defenders. Um, as long as you have enough firepower offensively on the floor at the same time, it works. Yeah. So um, you get a scholarship from UCLA? I got a scholarship for UCLA. Um, UTEP was one of the top five schools when I was coming out that I, I visited. Um, went to Syracuse, UCLA, UTEP, Arizona, and Duke. And I decided to go to UCLA. Uh, but UTEP was right there. And, you know, so when I made the decision to transfer, it was a no brainer. I was, uh, I was, it was an easy decision for me to come here. Really? Why? And Antonio was here. And I saw how well he was doing. Yeah. And Tim was yeah. here, right? Tim uh, recruited me. By the time I got here, he left. Oh, so he was gone. Russ Bradberg, Greg Lackey, Norm Ellenberger, and coach. Yeah. Hmm. Tim took his first head coaching job. Yeah. So how far did you guys go when you were at UTEP? Uh, NCAA tournament every year, second round. Yeah. 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 First year we got bounced by Indiana. Second year, Minnesota. Yeah. So that might have been first round. Um, yeah. So you uh, you have a close relationship with Coach? Uh, you know what? We spent a lot more time together, you know, when he retired and I was coming back to town, um, you know, in the off seasons, things of that nature. So we yeah. had some, some, just some, some real conversations. It wasn't about basketball all the time. And yeah, no, he, yeah. he had a, he had a definite personality away from the game too. Yeah, he did. He was a big personality. Absolutely. Um, so you go in the second round and, uh, Second round, thirty fifth pick to the Bullets when they were the Bullets. Wow! Did you uh, play for the Bullets at all? I did. I played a little bit. I was there for two years and then went on to Atlanta from there. Yeah. Yeah. You you were all over the place. What was your favorite oh, yeah. des favorite destination? Oh, definitely Utah. We had a lot of success there. I played. I was I was part of what was going on. Was Jerry Sloan the coach? Jerry Sloan was the coach. Yeah. A hard tough, ass. Tough guy. Tough guy. Yeah. Tough guy. Big time. But if you play for Coach Haskins, you can pretty much handle anybody. So yeah, but so we had our moments. That's for sure. <laughs> you, Utah, you guys went to the the, the playoff finals a couple of times. Now two finals, two finals against the Bulls, and uh, yeah, some really good years. It was a fun time to be a part of the Jazz teams. Yeah, were those the Jordan Bulls? 
Jordan Bulls, yep. Pretty incredible. Pretty incredible. He was everything is that he was everything they advertised, that's for sure. Yeah. Is he uh is he top dog in your book? No doubt. No doubt. Not even a question. Yeah. And so right in the middle of your career, you went over to Europe. Had a couple small stints in Europe. So uh, before I got drafted to the Bullets, I spent a couple months in Spain. Uh, I left school early, didn't graduate, um, just to go put a few dollars in my pocket. And then after that, during the middle of my career, I went to Greece and played. Um, you know, I spent almost a full year there, and that was yeah. a great experience. Um, and then very briefly, I was in Italy during one of the lockout periods that we went through during my career. Yeah. In between contracts, didn't have anything guaranteed. So I went over there again to make sure at least I was getting a check. Yeah. So you go from Utah to the Lakers? Utah, I went to Seattle. Utah to Seattle. Seattle signed to Seattle as a free agent, was traded to the Lakers with Horace yeah. Grant. Yeah. What was that like? Uh, I know you um, a championship. It doesn't get any better. Really now. good team. You know, unfortunately, I was injured during our championship run. But uh, it was a really, really good team. I mean, there was no yeah. doubt in my mind we were going to win it all. I mean, that's how good they were. That's yeah. how good that team was. It was Shaq, Kobe, Robert Horry, Horace Grant, Derek Fisher, Ron Harper, Isaiah Ryder, Ryder that I mentioned earlier, um, Tyron Lou. Devin George, Mike Penberth, who's now coaching the NBA, uh, and Brian Shaw. I mean, and Rick Fox. I think I mentioned Rick Fox. I'm not sure. Yeah, but yeah we, had a, we had a very talented team. Was the LA organization different than other organizations? Uh, you know, uh, I think Phil Jackson was definitely different. Was he your coach? All, all good franchises are different in, in regard to their attention to detail, mm -hmm. the importance of culture and accountability and uh, respect for, you know, uh, authority. Yeah. What was Phil Jackson? Very, very rare. Oh, he, I caught him at two different times. I actually played for the Bulls when Jordan went to go try to play baseball. I was there briefly. Um, and this was prior to me going to Utah and was released. But uh, he was a lot more demonstrative then. By the time he got to the Lakers a few championships later, you know, uh, he was a lot more chill. Yeah. But sir, you coached, uh, or, or what, nine years, 10 years? I've coached now about 10 years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, how much coaching do you really do in the NBA? Oh, there's a ton of it. I mean, people really? don't even, don't have a clue. Absolutely. Really? A ton of it. And it I might not know. be on the court all the time. It might not be practicing for hours and hours and hours because we have an 82 game schedule, but you're, it's a, it's a, a easily a 12, 14 hour day between practices, individual workouts, going back at night to shoot with guys, and then film work. Film yeah. work and game planning. It's, yeah, it's, it's a job for real. And, and do the assistants get uh, hammered? Um, in terms of? Work, workload? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, the head coach, he delegates. If he's smart, um, he's going to hire the right assistants that, you know, he trusts. Trust is always a big factor. And the reason I say he's going to delegate you know, quite a bit is because, you know, over an 82 game season, uh, you can lose your voice in the locker room. So the more, and I think Steve Kerr has mentioned this here lately, the more he allowed his assistants to run practices and things of that nature, um, the, the longer his voice can be heard. So, so yeah, it's important. What do you think about the Warriors? And the, the way um, I think they've done something incredible. I think, you know, they, they, they drafted right. They scouted right. They put the right, pieces together uh, obviously you know who who knew how good stuff Steph Curry would end up being and Clay Thompson he will he he still wasn't himself you know during this run and they still would manage to win it but they got an incredible coach culture they moved the ball like no one else so everybody in the league tries to emulate them uh, which is really hard to do because they play so unselfishly so um yeah they're they're they're, they're truly special yeah so what do you think happened to the Lakers last year? Um, I think it was a, it was just a, I think it was a poor move, I think. And I don't blame Russell Westbrook at all. I just think it's a bad fit. He's ball dominant. He's been that way every single place he's been. And so to have him 
stand on the perimeter and be a catch and shoot guy. It's just not who he is. So yeah. I think that was a mistake. We all make them, but um, I think they got to figure a way to move on from that. You know, Coach Ham. I do. We were teammates in Milwaukee when I played in Milwaukee. Yeah. Yeah. So he's got the big job, huh? He's got a he's got a big challenge ahead of him. But I mean, you know, who knows what's going to end up happening with him? You know, though. You know, they're, they're, they're talking today that everybody's trying to reconcile. I don't know if that's truly the case or not, but with with um, Westbrook. Yeah, I think uh, I think they've got to be prepared to do so, but I think they're still going to try to make moves. Yeah, they have to. They I mean, have. You know. Yeah, they, they just can't, you know, can't do it again. What they did last year was embarrassing. Yeah, it was. And they need to be healthy. And, you know, I think, you know, Anthony Davis is just to blame as, as anybody. He has to stay healthy. Yeah. Has to play a full season. I mean, or, or close to it, you know. Yeah. Be, Very you know, fragile. Yeah. Yeah, so hopefully he can stay healthy, man. I'd like to see him stay healthy. Yeah. What do you think about what's going on at UTEP? You know, man, I, this year I've really, to be honest with you, tried to dumb it down and kind of get away from the game. So I really didn't watch a bunch of their games. Uh -huh. I know it's hard with the, all the NIL stuff that they're going through. They're losing players. and But from what I did see, they had a really good season. Yeah. Unfortunately, they lost nine guys. And I think that's just – it's not a surprise. It's just something – you're going to have to deal with unless they can figure out a way to get enough money in here to keep guys, even guys that develop, even guys that might be um, lower ranked recruits. Once they get them better, they're still going to be able to be poached. But you know, That's without, a it, without a, the money that comes from a TV contract, we're, we're hurting. Yeah. You know, well, I mean, then, then you got to rely on boosters and if you can't get the boosters to pitch in like, you know, the guys at Texas Tech and UT and and, and I know there's that there's apple and it's apples and oranges there, but um, there's guy there's guys here in this town that have loved the program and really given to the program and you know that it's just got to continue. I, I don't think you know pumping money into the facilities is the answer. You know you need to you know kids uh, that used to be really important when kids couldn't get paid. You know, everybody wanted the best facilities and, you know, and that was a huge recruiting tool. Now guys are coming in and recruiting meetings with their agents and, and, or I should say not agents, financial managers. And um, the bottom line is how much can you pay me? Yeah. So, well, you got set up to be a, a, a manager, didn't you? Give me that again. Didn't you get set up to be a manager uh, or a, an agent? Yeah, I did. Probably the worst mistake of my life. <laughs> so God, yeah. I, I, I don't know why I did that, but it's just, it's a dirty business. Um, and I truly believe that agents run, you know, the game of basketball. Uh, but it was one, something that was for me. Yeah. So it's not, said, it's not a business where you're doing it on relationship. It's very right. rare. Right. So you said you were trying to dumb it down. Um, are you kind of burnt out or? Well, no, you know, I mean, I hadn't had a break from basketball for 30 years. So wow. uh, it's kind of nice to, you know, be able to go golfing, be able to go fishing, be able to let my body heal, my mind rest, because uh, it's, it's truly a grind. And that's, that's the part that people don't see. That's way more of a grind as a coach than it is a player. Uh, absolutely. Really? It's not even close. Really? Not even close, yeah. Wow. So, so what was it like uh, playing with Shaq and Kobe? Um, well, during the time I was there, this is when they were feuding and uh, the feud was real and they didn't really like each other at the time. And, uh, and everybody knew Kobe it. was very young. Uh, he was a gunslinger. He, he was who he was. He wasn't going to pass the ball and you know, Shaq demanded the ball and wanted to play inside out because that was that era. Um, but you know, Kobe was stubborn, but he was a worker. He was an incredible worker. I mean, his... Uh, work ethic is legendary, obviously. Yeah. So, uh, but it was a fun group. I mean, once we got past that, we had a lot of mature guys that could help weather that storm for them. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we were able to have great success. Were you in the middle of the three peat? Is that what that was? Yeah, that's what it was. 2000, right. 2001. Can you imagine mm -hmm. if Shaq and Kobe had stayed together? Oh, yeah, dominant. Could you imagine if Shaq and Penny Hardaway could have stayed together? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, it just, you know. Penny's whole deal would have been different. Yeah. 
I guess he's still coaching somewhere, huh? He's with the Memphis Tigers, right? Yeah. Yeah, head coach there. Yeah, he's doing well too. Is there a big difference in, in, in NBA coaching and, and uh, college coaching? Oh yeah, big time, big time. And I, and I couldn't really speak to what college coaching looks like now with the transfer portal being what it is and the NIL agreements and having to manage all that. You know, you almost need a general manager just to mention, you know, manage that stuff. It's almost like professional basketball. Yeah. Um, so I can, really can't speak to that, but recruiting is always, is always number one and you gotta have talent and, um, Right now, trying to retain talent is the big, you know, key. So it's kind of what tough. Think? I, I think as a fan, it'd be tough. You know, you can't really identify or get behind anybody, you know? Yeah. Well, there's no, you know, I mean, can you imagine Jerry West wearing a Celtic jersey? Yeah, that's nuts, right? It's going to get rain, you know? Yeah. I mean, back back when I played in our era, it was, we all took pride. Obviously, I didn't have an opportunity to play in one place, but a lot of guys took pride in trying to uh, play in one place. Yeah. You know, that was a badge of honor. You know, that's why, you know, big kudos to a guy like uh, Damian Lillard up there in Portland. He, he stuck it out. Yeah, and he got paid. Oh, yeah, he sure did. Yeah, he's got a lot of 60 million reasons to stick it out. Yeah, not a problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a year. Yeah. yeah. So when you were at Utah, who did you got? You guys had the Bulls in the finals. We had the Bulls in the finals. So that was Stockton Malone and Brian Russell and Shannon Anderson and Howard Isley and myself, Greg Ostertag, Chris Morris, one of my favorite teammates of all time. Um, we had a really, really good group that just gelled. We had just enough toughness to, you know, make the jumps that Utah in the past hadn't been able to make. Yeah. They're always really good. It's just kind of like their teams now. They're really good, but they can't really make that jump. So it seems um, like a yeah. great organization. Really, it was really, really it was really a good time to be a part of the organization. We had a blast. This whole city was behind us and great fans and crazy fans. Wild. Yeah. So did you guard Shaq? Guard Shaq, Shaq all the time. Was that a bitch? No, it was, it was a big pain in the ass. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Best, you know, best defense was offense, man. You got to run them up and down the court, try to get them tuckered out. Yeah. You know, and. One thing, I mean, if you're able to shoot, which I could shoot shoot the ball a little bit, you know, he was going to come out of the paint. So pick, pop, you know, even though yeah. Jerry Sloan didn't want me to do it that often, I still did it. Yeah. Today's uh, game is nothing. Today's game is. That's all. That's the game. It's all three pointers. That's it. That's no it. big man. So if you're big and you can pick and pop and shoot the ball, you, you, can, make a, you can make a real good living. Yeah. Yeah. So what's, uh, what's next for you? That's a great question. You know, I, um, I think, you know, my evolution in the game really is about probably taking a, a look at, you know, what's going on in the front office. I've done everything. I've been a player. I've been a coach uh, uh, at, at two levels. And so I know what recruiting looks like. I know what trying to go out and find talent looks like. So uh, I would love to explore some executive positions. Um, what that looks like, I don't really know right now. I'm starting to put my feelers out. It might might look like uh, scouting initially, you know. Uh, and, um, that's something that I think I can sink my teeth into and maybe even stay here in town and, you know, fly around and maybe reg do some regional scouting, you know, um, West Coast preferably. But um, that would allow me to stay close to the game, into the game, use my knowledge and, uh, um, and you know, have an opinion on, you know, building isn't, culture of a team. Is it front office where you want to land? I think so. I think so. Um, you're always trying to grow in the game. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm not getting any younger, you know, so <laughs> the grind and putting my body out there, that 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 doesn't work anymore like it used to. Yeah. So The travel is um, it, huh? Travel is pretty brutal. I don't think it would be any easier, you know, scouting because you'd be flying all over the world looking at players because that's – what the game has come down to. There's players in Europe, all over the world now, you know, Russia, China, Africa, um, and uh, scouting college games along with pro games, and even high school games, you know. Yeah. What do you think about the college one and done? Um, you know what? As a player, from a player standpoint, if I was ready, I, I just can't imagine being eight, 19 years old and, and being able to do it personally back when I was that young, but these kids are they're men now, and unfortunately, I think they all can think they can do it. That's not the case. There's a very select few guys that can actually do it and stick. 
Yeah. Um, but I think if there's any positive to the NIL stuff, it's really that it may keep guys in college for a year or two more because yeah. they can get paid. Probably get paid more than going to like the G League Ignite. Yeah. So in, in talking to some of the G League guys in Las Vegas here recently, you know, they're concerned about that. You know, you know, they've started this program to help guys, you know, uh, make the transition to the NBA, young guys, yeah. but now colleges, excuse me, are paying um, paying good money and guys are staying. Yeah. So I saw Cappy's article about you and Elephant Butte. Oh, that was kind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you like I'm it gonna, up there, huh? I'm going to go up tomorrow. <laughs> oh. So and what do you do? Do you, do you fish? Do you boat? Go up there and fish, man. Yeah. Yeah. Go up there and fish and just take the boat out and myself or a bunch of friends. I will have a great time and um, know some great guys up there that have really, Frank Valerio, who's a, a fishing guy with Landon and Chapman um guide service he's you know kind of taken me under his wing and showed me the ropes and showed me the spots and showed me some tricks of the tray so it's been great yeah is your whole family here in. i'm sorry is your whole family here so no it's my kids are all grown up so i got a 29 27 and 22 year old so they're all living in their perspective areas of the country so it's just What's me and my wife. junior is uh working for a company out of miami florida so he is a real estate uh investor um and so he's working for a company that's acquiring properties and they sell them off to, you know, the, the market. And uh, so, yeah, he, he's a sharp kid. He's a sharp dude. And where does he live? Florida? He, he's in L.A. right now, but he's making a transition to Miami. Yeah. Wow. And the yeah. girls? My oldest is in L.A. and my uh, my 27-year-old is in Anchorage, Alaska. So I'm going to go oh. get to do some fishing up in Anchorage here okay. in about a few weeks. And uh, always excited to do that. It's, if for anybody who's not been there, it, it's beautiful. It is worth the trip. Alaska is. It sure is. It's yeah. absolutely gorgeous. Well, good. Yeah. And about this time of the year, the weather is great too. Yeah, it's a little hot here, huh? Ooh, man. You know, especially this week. So yeah. So you're out there getting baked. Yeah, you got to get. You got to get out early, man. You got to. You got to be up with the sun. You know. Yeah. And, Spend three, four hours and get out of there before it gets too hot. Yeah. That's you also, also, you know, looking at different pieces of memorabilia of yours that I have, I have a, a Timberwolves jersey. Oh, wow. Uh, hey, but that's a collector's item because I didn't wear that very long. Really? <laughs> and, and then I've got a couple jazz jerseys. I've got a couple of uh, pairs of your shoes. Okay. You got all kinds of stuff. You keep, yeah. you, you keep your stuff? I keep a lot of, I kept a lot of my stuff. I wish I would have kept more. Really? I wish I would have kept the more of other guys' stuff, but uh, I was too proud back then or too bone, you know, pigheaded to ask anybody for anything, you know? Yeah. We still didn't like the guys that we were playing yeah. against. I mean, so you know, if you, would, if, you, if you would have asked Kobe for a jersey, would he have given it to you? Oh, yeah, no doubt. No Great doubt. Guy. Great, Great guy. Great sad guy. deal, wasn't it? Yeah, very sad. Very sad. Very yeah. Sad. So, um, who's your, or your, you mentioned one of your favorite teammates, who's your most favorite teammate or teammates, maybe three. And, and who were your three? You know what? Playing with Gary back in high school, if I really look back at my career and I wish I would have done something differently, I wish I wanted to, would have went to college with him because he made the game that much easier. That's how good he was. Um, I wish we would have played here at UTEP together. Yeah, um, but, but ultimately, um, the other guy that reminded me of him was John Stockton. Now, not the shit talking, but his ability to pass and set the game up for you and make it easy. Mm -hmm. You know, on-time passes are a thing of the past, but those were two of the guys that really did it well. I mean, would Stockton work in today's game? Oh, yeah, all these guys would. All, no doubt. I mean, there's just no... The game is still physical, don't get me wrong, but it's not as physical it was then. You, couldn't put, yeah. you can't put your hands on anybody defensively anymore. So if those guys were able to do it in that era and get their you know butts knocked down when they tried to go to the hoop and get back up, they could do it in this era. Yeah. Shooting about 10, 12 free throws a game. And Malone, was he soft or was he all right? Uh, <laughs> oh, shit. He was hard as nails, man. Really? Yeah, he worked his ass off, you know, and he was probably the – 
probably the best conditioned athlete I've uh, ever been around and probably going to get to spend some time up here with him in Alaska here when we go up in a few weeks to because he has a place on the Kenai River where I like to fish. So we talked here recently. So that'll be fun, man. Yeah. Catch up with him. And the, the, the guys that you just couldn't uh, get along with? Uh, well, yeah, you know, Shaq was one of them before he was a teammate. Didn't like playing against him. Um, Elijah Wan, uh, Tim Duncan always bothered me because he was always just so stoic. Yeah. You know, so I love trying to get under his skin. Yeah. Um, and, um, but you know what? I mean, was there guys that like I hated? No, I honestly, honestly couldn't say that. You know, I mean, you know, most of these guys, contrary to popular belief, are pretty good guys. Yeah. You know? I mean, there's some jerks out there, of course, but most of them are, you know, are at least decent human beings. So, yeah, uh, no, great memories. Well, good. Well, Greg, thanks for uh, talking to me. You got it, man. And you got it. I appreciate it. Okay. You take Thank care. You and enjoy your fishing. All right, man. Thank Bye, you. Bye, bud. See ya. Bye.